It is early March here in Maine and still very much the dead of winter. There's no questioning that. We have over a foot of snow falling today. And despite that, spring is technically right around the corner. And I love this time of year because it's an opportunity to sneak one more winter knit in before the seasons change. So I thought it would be really fun to take you along with me as I knit up a cardigan, which I think is the perfect transitional piece between seasons and show you what my process looks like, give you some behind the scenes footage and potentially share some tips, tricks, or just spread some inspiration along the way. Before we get started, let's first talk pattern and yarn. Because I was knitting this towards the end of the winter season into the early spring months, I really wanted a transitional cardigan that I could wear into the warmer months ahead. So after a long search on Ravelry, I found the Champagne Cardigan, which is a pattern by designer Petite Knit. The Champagne Cardigan is a classic raglan oversized design and can easily be dressed up or down. It's knit top down with minimal seaming and has this beautiful double knit button band that really ties the whole design together. The pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn to be knit on recommended needle size US 7 at a gauge of 18 stitches by 28 rows. It spans nine bus sizes ranging from 80 to 150 centimeters. Designed to be slightly oversized with a boxy shape, the pattern recommends about 28 centimeters or 11 inches of positive ease. For reference, my bust size is about 85 centimeters, so I will plan on knitting the second from the smallest size, which is size small. The pattern is available in seven different languages, and there are even some video tutorials that are available for reference if needed. In terms of yarn, I chose to work with a Noro yarn that I've been really excited to try out. The yarn for this project was generously gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio, who is actually the sponsor of this video. The Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio is a yarn shop located in Armstrong, British Columbia in Canada, and they are actually a flagship store for the yarn brand Noro, which is a Japanese company really known for some beautiful, unique yarns. Again, I chose Noro Madara, which is a two-ply, non-superwash, worsted weight yarn that is a blend of wool, silk, and alpaca. It's a tightly spun yarn with subtle tweed texture with these beautiful little colorful specks throughout that make this yarn super interesting and unique. I chose the color number 01, also called sake. And a fun little fact, when I was doing a little bit more research on this yarn, Madara actually means uneven or speckled in Japanese, which I thought was really fun. For anyone who is curious about this yarn or wants to check out the Twisted Pearl, they have generously offered a 20% off coupon that will be available for a short period of time following the upload of this vlog. So be sure to check out the description below for the code. Alrighty, I think I'm ready to go ahead and cast on a gauge swatch. So I have a few skeins of yarn caked up. I have my pattern printed and in front of me, I have my needles picked out and I will definitely be gauge swatching for this project because again, this is a brand new to me yarn. I've never worked with it before. I'm not sure how it's gonna block out. I have read that it tends to grow a lot after blocking. So I might have to make some adjustments to my um, needles 
you know, from that perspective. But I'm gonna go ahead and try the US size seven, which is what the pattern recommends. And Noro actually has a very similar needle size recommended for about the same gauge. So I'm hoping that that works out in my favor. So here's my gauge swatch so far and I'm really loving how the fabric is coming out. I mean, look at all those beautiful colors in there. It's been a lot of fun to knit so far. And granted, I'm only about an inch in, but I did go ahead and measure to see where I was at in terms of gauge. And I'm already one stitch over. Because I know that this is gonna grow a lot after blocking, I think what I'll do is I'll size down to a US size six and remake the swatch um, because I already know that this is probably gonna be too big of a needle size to meet gauge. Alrighty, round two of swatching is done. So here is my swatch on US size six needles. And I know the lighting is not great because the sun has gone down. So now I'm relying on artificial lighting, but I hope you can get a good idea of what the yarn looks like. It's definitely got a very thick and thin uh, quality, but the colors are just beautiful. I don't know if you can really appreciate that in the swatch, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and measure this. I always measure my swatches before and after blocking because I wanna see what the degree of change is so I can um, help predict that um, when making a garment. So, one. so I have 20 stitches that are equaling 10 centimeters wide. And I think that's about the same for the row gauge. Yeah. So I'm like two stitches over what the gauge is, which is okay because I do predict that this is going to grow quite a bit when blocking. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a wash and block it out to see if I meet gauge. And I actually always leave my swatch attached so I like don't cut the yarn. I leave it attached to the, the cake because if I ever need extra yarn towards the end of a project, um, then I don't need to deal with weaving in extra end. So it might be a little bit lazy of me, but that's one of my strategies. All right, let's go block this. <laughs> So here's my swatch that dried yesterday, and I did end up meeting gauge with the US size six needle. So I went ahead and cast on the project, and here's what I have so far. I was able to get through the short row section, shaping in the back, and then now onto the raglan increases to work through the shoulders, and it's going really well so far. The, yarn is really fun to work with. It's very soft to touch and really fun and interesting because of all the little pops of color. So really enjoying this so far and hoping to get some more progress done on this today.
So it's day four of knitting and vlogging my way through the making of the champagne cardigan. Granted, these are not consecutive days, which basically means I'm only recording the longer, bigger knitting sessions that I'm doing, but I have been getting in some rows like before and after work and that sort of thing. So I've been making some decent progress. So here's what I've got so far. This is more or less the raglan shaping of the cardigan. Again, it's knit top down. So this will essentially, <laughs> looks really funky, but that's how that will fit. Granted, all my stitches are very much smushed together and I should probably switch out to a longer cable, but I'm really close to finishing the increases for the sleeves. And at that point, I'll put those in hold and keep on working the body. And therefore I won't really need a longer cable then. So I might just be lazy and wait this one out and deal with all the smushed stitches. So this is really fun so far. I think I commented a few days ago that this working with this yarn is really enjoyable. It's very, very soft to touch. Um, but again, the texture is super interesting because it's got this thick and thin appearance and all these little colorful nubs of yarn here add a lot of interest and make it really fun. And it's definitely not a boring stuck in that piece to knit because the color changing effect just keeps it really interesting. So really fun so far. If you don't like thick and thick and thin yarn or kind of that tweedy appearance um, of the yarn, this is probably not the best option for you. But um, if you do like tweed yarn and you don't mind the thick and thin, this is, you got to check this out. This is a really cool yarn to work with. It's been a joy so far. So really excited how this will continue to work up. I'm really pleased with the raglan shaping as well. I think it's really neat looking and I think this is designed really nicely that it has a bit of a seam if you can see that. So you know the little knit stitches kind of pop out a little bit and create more of a defined seam which will look really nice in the end and yeah, it's, I've really learned over the years to tighten up my stitches before and after increases, and that helps to give a really clean, tidy finish to those um, design features. So, yeah, I'm going to um, cake up a little bit more of my yarn and keep on working this, working on this, and check back in with you hopefully after a little bit more progress. Okay. So it's a typical work day for me. I just got home and it's about six o'clock. I think it's six o'clock, 6.30 actually. And I have some chores to do, some cleaning up to do in the kitchen. And I actually have to pack my bag because I'm leaving for a trip tomorrow and still have yet to pack. So I'm gonna get some chores done and then put on a cup of tea and then hopefully get some more knitting done. And at that point I can share some of my progress on my cardigan. It's going well so far. Very much enjoying the process of knitting it. Um, to be very transparent, my elbows are a little bit sore from purling. Uh, cardigans are a ton of purling and I kind of forgot that going into this project, but that's okay. I just need to take some frequent, frequent breaks. Um, but yeah, let me get some chores done and then settle in for the night and finish up with some knitting.
So it's been a few days since I vlogged any progress on knitting my cardigan, and that's because I went away for a few days. So excuse me, I have had a little knitting break and surprisingly did not take any knitting with me on this trip, um, which is kind of odd for me because I usually have a project um, on hand. But either way, I had a few days off um, after getting back and was able to do some knitting. And um, here is essentially the pro the progress I've made. So I did officially split for the sleeves and I am now knitting the body, which is just back and forth, um, knitting on one side, purling on the other. So it is quite a bit of purling, which it's not my favorite, but it's still very mindless and enjoyable. And um, yeah, going well so far. I have no complaints. Um, I think at some point I'll probably put the body on hold and knit the sleeves just to change things up a little bit, be able to knit in the round for a while. And um, I do this a lot when I'm a little nervous about running out of yardage. And I have just enough um, yarn, I think, on hand to make this. Um, but Something I haven't talked about yet is a um, double knit uh, button band that will come um, later on. So I definitely don't want to run out of yarn when I do that. So I think for the sake of, you know, changing things up and, um, you know, maybe just knitting a little bit and taking a break from purling, I will likely work on the sleeves before finishing the body. So that's my plan and I'm gonna stick to it and I will continue to share the process with all of you. Hey everybody, so it's been a few days since I last vlogged about my project, um, but I'm back and I've made some uh, significant progress, I think, on the body. I'm gonna show you what I have so far. So I think I left off with having just split for the sleeves. And as you can see, I've made a ton of progress on the body here, which was honestly a little um, boring. <laughs> Lots of just uh, knitting and purling, which is totally fine. Um, very mindless. I got a lot done like in the car, driving places. Um, well, not me driving, me in the passenger seat. Um, so yeah, so I have gotten to um, the end of my third skein. And what I've done here is I've put the body on hold. And I'm using um, these things called the barber cords or... Uh, this is called the Knitting Barber, is the, the manufacturer or the company. Um, but essentially what they are, are there are these like long plastic tubes um, that have little, it's like a hollow tube. And you put it on the end of a needle and then pull the rest of the needle through the live stitches. And that way it's kind of like a placeholder. And the reason that I'm doing this, and you can see kind of right there, there it's holding the stitches on. So the reason that I'm doing this is that I only have five skeins of this yarn and um, 
I do need to obviously, you know, finish the ribbing on the bottom. I need to have enough yarn left over for a tubular cast off. And then there's a button band that's knit after everything is done. Um, and I'm a little worried that that's going to use more yarn than I anticipate. And so I would hate to get to you know, close to the very end and then run out of yarn and have to buy and wait for an entire skein to arrive. So I'm gonna put this on hold and start to work on the sleeves. And at that point I can gauge, um, or at least have a better idea of how much yarn I'm gonna be working with uh, towards the end of the sweater. So it might get close, we'll see. I'm actually very excited to start knitting in the round. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and try this on first to see how it fits. I did try it on um, like a week or so ago and um, it fit decently. So let's do that. Really, really careful not to um, pull on the cords very much. Sorry, my whole bra is showing here. Um, I don't want to lose any of the stitches, but I think this cord is, I used the longest one. So yeah, say I have plenty of room so I can pull that even. All right. So it's all bunched up here, but the good thing about these cords is that you can really, um, you know, they're slippery. So the stitches move really well, as opposed to going on like a really long knitting cord. All right. So that's where we are so far. I think, um, I mean, the length isn't bad. I feel like if I had to start the ribbing here, that wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't be a terribly cropped cardigan. So I like that. And then it's hard to tell because this is really rolling up on itself, but this is fitting well so far too. Granted, you know, there's a, there's a thick button band that comes into play here. So this might actually end up being a little bit more wide than I anticipated, but I'm kind of liking what this is looking like so far. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Let's get started on the sleeves. Everybody, I just filmed a podcast episode and uh, right before it I was able to finish my sleeve my first sleeve so I knit this exactly to the pattern and the only exception was that I 
um, size down a few extra needle sizes in the cuff here. So instead of a US size 7, I think I used a US size 4. And that's just because when I tried it on, the cuff seemed to be just a little bit too big. But otherwise, I think the length is pretty good. I just gave it another try on. Um, I'm getting a little bit nervous about how oversized this may be after blocking it because when I tried it on, if you remember, it fit pretty nicely. Like I, I like kind of the positive ease, um, the degree of positive ease that it is now prior to being blocked. And if you remember, my swatch did block out quite a bit. Um, this yarn just really likes to eat up water and stretches quite a bit. So I'm a little concerned with how much it will grow because right now I'm liking this fit. So. I might end up just trying to steam out a little bit, a little part of the sleeve here to see what happens. Um, maybe it can just relax the stitches a little bit um, without really stretching it too much. Um, I don't think it needs a ton of like evening out of stitches because my knitting is pretty um, even. But at the same time, it feels a little stiff and could use a little bit more drape, which is exactly what blocking helps to do. So I think what I'll do is I'll just knit the other sleeve. Um, I'm running a little bit low on yarn. Um, I used almost all of my fourth skein. So I have one more skein. Um, I'm definitely going to have to order another skein to be able to finish the ribbing on the bottom and then do the, the neckband there. So that might delay the process a little bit, which is totally fine. I think it will be worth it to really make sure it's, um, you know, knit to the pattern and exactly how I intended it to look. Um, so yeah, TBD on the blocking and I'll be um, continuing to work on the sleeve later today and we'll update, update you again when I'm back on the body. Okay, another day in the making of the champagne cardigan. Today was just a regular work day for me and I've gotten some serious knitting done on the cardigan. So I wanted to update you on that. I haven't recorded a lot just because it's been a little bit boring. I'm just knitting through the sleeves um, and I've made some really good progress. So I finally have both sleeves finished and I did follow the pattern exactly as written for the sleeves. The only modification I made was using a different needle size for the ribbing. I believe the pattern recommended a US size 7 and I sized down to a US size 4 just because when I tried it on the sleeves felt a little bit big for me and I did not want to end up with like a very loose ribbing. So I was a little bit aggressive with that but I'm really liking how the ribbing came out. Um, and yeah, a tubular, tubular bind off here to finish it up, which is really nice and tidy. And I did go ahead and do a very light steam block of um, more or less the back and this panel here and this sleeve. And I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but you know, this is the sleeve that is unblocked kind of in its like, you know, immediate post knitting state where the stitches are, you know, a little bit stiff still, um, not as even, obviously, pre-blocking. You can see kind of how that sleeve uh, really tapers down um, from the, the main sleeve part, you know, to the ribbing here. So that's the unblocked sleeve. And then here is the blocked sleeve, which is, you know, falling very nicely here, just hanging on this hanger. Um, so stitches are a little bit more even and then here's the ribbing. So not, you know, not as a, not as an aggressive taper there. Um. Good morning. It's Saturday and it is finally spring here. 
which we just had two consecutive days of 70 degree plus weather, which is definitely a tease for Maine in April. <laughs> it's probably gonna drop back down into the 40s, which is okay. Um, but I was able to get outside a little bit over the last couple days. I actually haven't been knitting much because I've been waiting for my last skein of yarn to arrive because I did have to go ahead and order a sixth skein. And I'll update you on my progress in just a second. Um, it's really crazy that I started this process when there was literally two feet of snow on the ground and now it's warm weather. It kind of just shows you uh, really how long it takes to knit a garment, um, especially when there's a few different uh, hiccups along the way, like having to order more yarn, waiting for it to arrive in the mail, that kind of thing. But it's been super enjoyable and I've made a lot of progress. I'm really hoping to finish this up in the next couple days. So here is my cardigan. As you can see, I was able to start the ribbing on the hem. I only have about an inch to go here and then a tubular bind off, um, which will take some time. And then I'll hopefully start on the button band, which is also gonna take a good chunk of time because it's a double knit uh, style, um, which I have yet to do before. So really interested to learn that. And, um, I, you know, hear that's time consuming. So hopefully able to, uh, really dig out some time today to knit, um, and finally finish this baby up, which is exciting. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's open up my last skein of yarn here. So here's the package and this really cute pink, uh, envelope here. So thank you to the Twisted Pearl for sending me an extra skein. I'm usually pretty good about ordering enough yarn, if not a little bit more for a project. Um, so here it is. Last skein of Noro yarn. So I'm gonna go wind this up and get some knitting done. to lower their other agents because other than SGL2 inhibitors and maybe GLP-1, we do not have organ protective effects demonstrated for other agents, which I will show you. So if you want to back off on their insulin, sulfonylurea, have a discussion with their endocrinologist or diabetologist. Okay, so I'm nearing the end of my tubular bind off here. Thank goodness, this took forever. And this yarn is not ideal for a bind off like this because it is a single ply yarn and being kind of twisted and turned throughout the different stitches to bind off really weakened some of the fibers and actually caused it to break while doing this. So I had to do a little bit of splicing to get the yarn back together. But for the most part, it's going well. I'm, like I said, almost done. Really happy to be binding this off. Um, and then I'll move on to the button band. So here's my button band so far, and it's going well. Those are the little buttonholes in here. And it was a little tricky to figure out how to start this. I did have to go and watch the video tutorial, which I'll try to remember to link in the description of this blog. And once I started, it was a little finicky with the needles, but I ended up getting the hang of it. And at first I was using a like longer um, double pointed, or uh, sorry, circular needle for this. And then I switched over to um, just short uh, double pointed needles, which have definitely made it a lot easier. And I've definitely kind of gotten in a little rhythm. I have one more little button band to do here where the marker is and then make my way through the rest of the uh, neckline. So coming out really nice and really kind of just cherishing this last bit of knitting here with this beautiful yarn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I 
am nearing the end of my double knit button band. So here we are. I have this much left to go here. And let me tell you, it was a slug. <laughs> it's such a long process and I'm really excited to be done with this. It's been fun, no worries, I've enjoyed myself, but just kind of getting to that point that you get towards the end of project where you're excited to just finally cast off and start wearing it. So I'm gonna do a little bit more knitting and um, then probably make the decision of how I'm gonna block this. So I don't know if you can see, but it's just still very like wonky. You know, the stitches are not even. I did steam block this a little bit. Um, at one point, uh, don't know if maybe it's just, you know, kind of been maneuvered a little bit while I'm knitting and has lost a little bit of that drape that I initially got after just a light steam blocking. Um, so I'm not quite sure of what I'm going to do. I'm really, really tempted to wet block this because I think the stitches would just even out really nicely. Um, but again, I'm really nervous that this is going to grow a lot. We're getting a little bit of sun, as you can see, which is so nice. Brought my hat out because I don't want to burn. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get a little bit more knitting done and then we'll see if I pull the trigger on a wet block or not. cardigan is finally done and while I was knitting the last couple rows really gave some good thought to whether I wanted to wet block this or not and then I started thinking I would probably at some point have to wash this from a cleanliness standpoint so I'm gonna go ahead and wet block it I'm a little nervous it's gonna grow a lot but if anything it's a oversized cardigan that I can throw over as a cozy warm layer I think it's gonna look good, so we're just gonna go for it. Okay, not the best outfit to try on a sweater, but before I put this in a wool wash bath, I thought I would share with you guys what the unblocked version looks like. So here goes. So you can kind of see that it's still like kind of bunchy here in the underarm. The sleeves just aren't, this one is the one that I steamed a little bit, so it's a little bit looser, but um, still kind of that, uh, that crunchy, just finished knitting feel. So really hoping that this blocking is worth it. So you can kind of like see it crumpling up here. So we'll see if, uh, blocking makes makes the magic happen My cardigan is finally done. I can't believe it. 
I just pulled it off of the blocking mats and sewed on some buttons and I'll share with you about that in just a second. But first impressions, I'm in love. I'm so happy that I wet blocked this. I really think the yarn needed it to soften up. I think it softened up like tenfold. Um, and the drape is really, really nice now. I probably did gain a good inch or two of positive ease, which I'm okay with. It's still kind of like a perfectly oversized cardigan and exactly the cozy layer that I was hoping for. So super pleased with this. This yarn is just gorgeous. I really hope that I can knit with Noro yarn again. Um, it definitely has its quirks as I uh, explained in this vlog, um, but all in all, I'm just really, really happy with how it turned out. In terms of buttons, I ended up choosing this pearly white kind of neutral button. I thought it went really well with the colorful yarn, just something very simple and understated. I haven't been shopping for buttons in a long time and was actually a little bit overwhelmed when I was in Joanne Fabrics. I actually brought my swatch with me and initially thought that I wanted like a metal or wooden button but when comparing those, it just didn't seem like the right fit. So I came home with a few different options and ultimately uh, kind of matched the size and the style and I'm really happy with what I came up with. Mm -hmm. 